Revelations 22 from verse 12. It says, Look, I am coming soon, and my reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am coming very soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. These are the words of the Lord. He is coming soon to reward each and every one of us based on our works. I hope you are putting to use that which God has placed in you, using it to the glory of God for the enhancement of God's kingdom. Those potentials, those gifts, those talents, um, those opportunities, those resources, whatever it is that God has placed in you, the time, the time, time is very precious. What are you doing with your time? I hope you are investing and I hope you are being productive and effective for the kingdom. God bless you and I love you. Hello everyone, it's your girl Claire and I am super, super excited to be back here again today to encourage someone with the word of God. Amen. And I hope your week um, has been glorious. I hope you've had a wonderful week to the glory of God. I hope you've had a victorious week to the glory of God. Amen. Because the word of God makes us to understand that um, all things work together. I didn't say some things. It says, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So it doesn't matter what it looks like. You know, even when it looks like it is not working out for your good, the end result will work out for your good because the word of God is true. And because the word of God concerning your life is yea and amen. Glory be to God. So today... um. I want us to quickly look into the scriptures um, from the book of Luke chapter 19 from verse 11. So it says, before I tell us what um, my message for today is, I'll just read um, down to some parts, then I'll let you know what the message is all about. So it says, while they were listening to this, he went on to tell them a parable because he was near to Jerusalem and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. I am reading from um, the NIV version, uh, the, the uh, translation. So it says, the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. In other words, they literally thought that, you know, his, uh, he was about to set up his millennial kingdom here on earth. They thought he was um, about to, you know, set up his physical rule. You know, it was time for his physical rule on earth. So for him to clear um, this belief and the confusion um, that was going on at that point, you know, what they were thinking, he said to them in a parable, he said, a man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. So he called ten of his servants and gave them ten mirrors. And then he said to them, put this money to work until I come back. The NIV says, occupy till I come. Occupy till I come. So the NIV version says, put this money to work 
but King James says, occupy till I come. So he said to them, after giving them the money, he said, until I come, put this money to work until I come back. But the King James Version, like I said before, says, occupy till I come. While the NIV says, put this money to work until I come back. So we'll go down to the next verse. But his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, we don't want this man to be our king. I will still come to that. His, del uh, his subjects hated him and they didn't want him to be their king. They did what? They sent a delegation after him to say they don't want him to be their king. So he was made king anyway. He was made king, however, and returned home. Then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. The first one came and said, Sir, your mina has earned ten more. And then he said, Well done, my good servant. His master replied, Because you have been thrust worthy in a very small matter, take charge of ten cities. Take charge of what? Ten cities. The second came and said, Sir, your mina has earned five more. And his master answered, You take charge of five cities. Then another servant came and said, Sir, here is your mina. I have kept it laid away in a piece of cloth. I was afraid of you because you are a hard man. You take out what you did not put in and reap what you did not sow. This is what the servant was saying to the master. And then his master replied, I will judge you by your own words. You wicked servant, you knew, did you, that I am a hard man, taking out what I did not put in and reaping what I did not sow? Why then didn't you put my money on deposit so that when I come back, when I came back, I am reading the NIV translation, like I said before, it says, so that when I came back, I could have collected it with interest. That, that's what the master said. Then he said to those standing by, take his mina away from him and give it to the one who has 10 minas. Sir, they said, he already has 10. And then the master replied, I tell you that too. Everyone who has more will be given. But as for the one who has nothing, even what they have will be taken away. But those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. So we are still going to come to that. So we see the master, you know, here saying to his... um servants occupy till i come put this money to work until i come you know the people as at that time if you if you read from verse 11 they had thought that jesus christ w was about to um, set up his physical rule here on earth so that was what brought about this parable you know just to clear the air he was trying to make them understand how god works you know the the plan of man is not the plan of god so he had a mission and his mission was one to die for our sins jesus christ came what to die for our sins he came to be buried enter into hell take back um whatever the devil stole from us take back the authority and give it back to us so that we can be representatives of the kingdom. He was to rise again, in other words, resurrect to prove his immortality and to ascend to heaven to prove he is a supernatural deity and that he is from above. And then he was to come back at a set time. There was a set time. And the set time is what we are waiting for 
at the moment. So he was to come back at a set time to rule or reign on the earth amongst men. But before then, because if the story is likened to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who was to, you know, come to earth for the purpose of redeeming mankind, to die for our sins, to be buried, you know, to rise again, resurrect, and then to ascend back to heaven, and then to come back again to rule here on earth, to, to reign amongst men here on earth. So it wasn't yet time, So, but the people at that time, they thought it was time. So he was trying to clear the air. But not until he comes back again, he did what he apportioned um, to everyone some resources. He apportioned to everyone a gift, talent, potential. Everyone has something on the inside to use until the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So he was trying to say, take charge or be in charge till I return back using that which I have placed in you. He was trying to say, get busy with whatever I have given you till I come back again. He was trying to say to the servants, and that's every one of us who, who is, you know, a servant or everyone who is here on earth at this point, to stay engaged with the things of the spirit. He says, stay engaged in the things of the spirit till I come. He was saying, take up my position, take up my place, fill up the space till I return back. He was saying, use the resources that I have entrusted into your care. Invest it with the intent of what? Increasing it or being productive. He expected the servants to do what? To be productive. He was trying to say, make use of that which I have committed into your hands. Possess the earth till I come again, till I come back. So if, if we read the book of Romans 8 verse um, 19, it says something. It says, for creation, gazing eagerly as if with what outstretched neck is waiting and longing to see what the manifestation of the sons of God. The Bible makes us to understand in um, the book of Romans 8 verse 19. If you read the NIV version, it says, For the creation waits in eager expectation. For what? For the children of God to be revealed. In other words, creation awaits the manifestation of the children of God for them to be revealed. How do you reveal Christ? How do you manifest you know the, the the kingdom of god here on earth the power of god here on earth the glory of god here on earth it is by putting to work that which god has placed in you that which god has given to you the, the bible makes us to understand in the in the book of luke 19 from verse 11 it says the master gave them what he gave them some mina he gave them some money he gave them some resources he gave them gifts he gave them potentials he gave them something you know to to do it was like a responsibility he gave them something to do. That while he was away, they should occupy, take charge. Hallelujah. So he was trying, you know, to, to say to the stewards, be functional, be productive, make what investments, be committed and be in control with whatever gift I have what entrusted you with. These men were what given a responsibility to do what to bear fruits based on the ministry, based on the purpose, based on the gift, the talent, whatever it is that they were given, based on the purpose, based on the dream that they received from their master. They received authority. Authority from the master to do what? To take charge and to be in charge, to occupy and to fulfill purpose. So it is important that you as an individual understand your purpose here on earth and as a part of what the body of Christ. Because if you do not um, 
understand your purpose in understand your part you know or your role in the body of christ you will not be productive you will not um be able to do what to advance in the kingdom uh, uh things amen so they received authority from the master to be in charge like i said before and while the master was living, he did what? He gave them authority. And after giving them that authority, because he said to them, occupy till I come. He said, take this mina, use it, put it to work until what? I come back. He did what? He equipped them. He gave them a responsibility. He gave them an obligation. But at the same time, he made provisions. Amen. He gave them the resources. He gave them every opportunity. Hallelujah. For what? For the purpose of filling up the gap till he comes back again. Their duty was what? To take care of the kingdom while he was away. Using what? The large resources, the gifts. He did what? He handed or gave to each one of them. Amen. Amen. So, and according to Romans 12, I want us to quickly read um, Romans. Let's see what Romans says. The book of Romans chapter 12. Okay. Romans 12 um, verse 6. It says something there. It says, we have different gifts according to what the grace given to each of us we have different gifts in other words every one of us has what different gifts different potentials that's why you shouldn't envy anyone that's why you should not be jealous of anyone because everyone has their own gift and it is different according to the word of god for what for the purpose of building up the kingdom hallelujah for the purpose of edifying the body of christ for the advancement of the kingdom of god hallelujah he says every one of us has a different gift according to the grace given to what each of us hallelujah that's to tell you that when god gives you an obligation or a responsibility to do something hallelujah he equips you his grace is sufficient hallelujah so the question right now is are you investing yours whatever it is that god has placed in your hands are you investing it amen are you using yours for kingdom advancement and what multiplicity are you doing that how effective are you with your god giving resources and opportunities amen as a steward of God, you have an obligation to do what? To protect that which has been given to you. You have an obligation to impact with that which has been given to you. Which includes the impartation of the truth which has been revealed to you through the word of God to the human race. And how do you do that? Through the preaching of the word. And you do have an obligation to do what? To defend this truth by earnestly contending for the things of god you have an obligation one to do what to protect that which has been given to you whatever gift whatever it is that god has given to you it is your obligation as a steward of god to do what to protect it first to 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 nurture it and then your single second obligation is to do what impact with it to do what make investments with it it is your duty hallelujah to be fruitful with it it is your duty to you know make increase with it to be productive based on what god has placed in your hands so and then the, the another thing is you are required to do what to stay faithful or to be found faithful till he comes till your master comes it's your obligation to or it is required of you to do what to stay faithful as a steward to be found faithful when he comes again to reward his people 
So in other words, it's your obligation to impact into others the mysteries of God, the mysteries of God, which is revealed in the word of God. Hallelujah. It is your duty. Amen. You, you, you have that obligation to do that. So if we read verse 15 in the book of Luke chapter 19, it says something, you know, that he came back according to, you know, how he promised. He, he made a promise to them. He said he was coming back because he went away because he was to be made king. And then he was supposed to come back to rule. And he came back to do what? To reward every one of them. Hallelujah. That's what the, 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 the scripture says that he came back just like he promised in, in verse 15. Before he started asking every one of them. So what did you do with yours? And they started giving account. That's to tell us that every one of us will give account of that which has been entrusted into our care. Amen. So the master said to them, occupy till I come. Even though he knew, because if you go down and you start listening to what the, the, the stewards said, amen. He knew that not all the stewards will do exactly what he said. Also, Jesus himself knows that not everyone will be a part of the building of the kingdom. Even here on earth, not everyone will be a part of its maintenance. Not everyone will want to be a part of enhancing the kingdom. Amen. He knows that not everyone will believe or want him as king. Amen. That was why if you go down from verse 11, Luke 19 from verse 11 down, the Bible says they sent delegates saying they don't want him as their king. They didn't want, that, want him as their king. So Jesus himself knows that not everybody wants him as king and not everyone will end up as a citizen of his domain. Not everyone will embrace this message of the kingdom which we preach, which is founded on the truth. Amen. Because it has to be founded on the truth. Yet he said to all the stewards, not just to one, but all of them, he said, take charge till i come back to do what to establish my kingdom here on earth to rule amongst men so he is coming back to do what to rule and we await his coming amen but the question is what are you doing with your resources what are you doing with your gift how much impact are you making with your gift with your potential with the time time that, that you have time is precious what are you doing with the time what are you doing with your dream what are you doing with your purpose hallelujah so to to end this message i i want to encourage you who's listening to me right now to make up your mind to do what to continue till he comes with your gift with your talent with your resources with your potentials your treasures with your time, keep investing, keep bearing fruits, keep being purposeful, amen, and keep being a vessel of honor to the Lord, amen. Keep advancing the kingdom of our God. Stand up for your faith, stand up for the truth, and stand up for what is right. And above all, stand up for Jesus, for he is coming back again like he promised. Hallelujah. And he is coming to do what? To reward his servants according to the book of what? Revelations 22, 22 verse 12. If you read the book of Revelations 22 verse 12, it says he is coming back with his reward. Amen. And it says, and behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man what? According to his work. Amen. According to his work, the book of Revelations, verse 22, chapter 22, verse 12. Amen. He says, he is coming back to reward everyone according to what their works. Amen. So put that which God has placed into you to work. Keep using that um which the resources, the opportunities, the gifts that God has placed in you. Keep using it for his glory. Let's see what the NIV version says. Revelation 22 verse 
12. He says, look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me and I will give to each person according to what they have done. He says, I am going to give to each person according to what they have done. So what are you doing for the kingdom to enhance the kingdom, to advance the kingdom? Amen. How are you investing that which God has entrusted into your hands? The time, the talent, the treasures, the opportunities, the gifts. Hallelujah. Your purpose. What are you doing? How are you uh, um, utilizing your gifts? It's high time you wake up from your slumber. It's high time. It's a year of awakening. Don't say, I will, you know, uh, keep doing what I used to do. Maybe last year you were on fire for the Lord. Maybe last two years, you know, you were doing the things of the spirit. We're so much engaged in the things of the spirit. And right now it's like, mm, let me take a break. The things of God, you don't take a break. Amen. Get out there, begin to do whatever God has placed in you to do. Go ahead and utilize what God has placed in you. Invest it, impact other people, um, Make sure you are being effective for the kingdom of God. Make sure you are not keeping calm. Make sure you are not, um, uh, nothing is shutting you up because a lot of people out of threats and all that, um, they, they don't want to do the things, you know, that they used to do for the kingdom of God. I was there. I could remember when I just started my, this YouTube channel, I got a lot of threats. Should I put it that way? A lot of bullying. People would tell me, shut up. People will, will, will you know, send me right comments that like, shut up, stop preaching, stop talking, uh, you know, keep short, you're saying nonsense. And a whole lot of things happen, but I know the reason why I am here. And I made up my mind that nothing is going to shut me down and nothing is going to shut me up. If I live, I live for Jesus. And if I die, I die for Jesus. So it's high time every believer wakes up. It's uh, the time of awakening. Begin to put to use. Begin to um, utilize that which God has placed in you for the purpose of enhancing the kingdom. Jesus Christ is coming soon and very soon. You've got no time on your on your side. Remember the, the 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 servant that decided to just keep his own. He said because the he started saying all sorts of negative things about the master. But the master said something. Since you knew knew I was like this, why didn't you just put the money in the bank? You know, at least if it's there, I'll still get mm, whatever my interest from there. But you didn't do that. You just decided to you know keep the money. You know, just like that so he was rebuked by, by the master and at the end of the day he you know was punished for that amen he was punished for for not you know doing something not investing with the, the mina that was given to him so and for those other ones who who invested they didn't just invest the way they like they invested in a way that it's multiplied they invested in a way that you know they got increased they invested in a way that you know um there was productivity. Amen. So at the end of the day, they got their reward. And the one that, that did not use his own, his own was taken from him and was given to the other people who made good use of theirs. So beloved, I just want to encourage you today. Remember, God has placed in every one of us something that we need to use for the purpose of what building the kingdom. He is coming back again. Hallelujah. Coming back sometime to rule amongst men the question is what have you been what's your role how have you um, been a part of the building up hallelujah of the kingdom to the glory of god god bless you and i love you so much remember to occupy take charge till he comes hallelujah take up your position take up that place fill up the space that you know uh, he left void and he went back to heaven. He is coming back. Make sure you are using everything that has been entrusted into your hands for the purpose of what? Increasing the kingdom. Hallelujah. Enhancing the kingdom to the glory of God. God bless you. And I love you. And it's your girl, Claire. See you in my next video. Bye-bye. God bless you richly.